Hey, GED students. Halima uh, emailed us this tricky example at lightandsaltlearning at gmail.com. Now, this one is from the multiplying polynomials and factoring for the GED uh, lesson from the crash course, and it is the experience level practice that has this problem. So let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, what would the directions say? Directions, if this came up on the GED, would probably say simplify or multiply or find the product. Um, so, you know, basically this is a multiplication problem and that's all they're saying. If they say simplify, they're saying perform the indicated operation. So in this case, what's indicated by the symbols or signs here is multiplication. See how we have this big old grouping shoved up against this other big old grouping with nothing between them. That's what tells me that proximity between that grouping tells me that they are multiplying. Now, a lot of students would say, but Kate, 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 you know, these are lovely students, by the way. They're ones who worked really hard, memorized the order of operations, and they say, aren't we supposed to work inside of the grouping first? And I would agree with you if there was anything we could do in the grouping. But like, look at this grouping, 4A plus 2. Uh, we know we're only allowed to add and subtract the same kinds of things. And in the world of algebra, that means like terms. I can only add a terms with other a terms or plain old numbers with other plain old numbers. These are not like and so they cannot combine. And we see the same thing over here in this other grouping. 6a squared, that's an a squared term, minus a, that's a plain old a term, plus 2, that's a constant term, a regular number. None of these are like, they cannot combine. So yeah, I'd like to start in the grouping. I mean, it'd be nice if I could, things would certainly get simpler, but I can't. There's no math I can do there. And so what I'm left to do is actually do this multiplication. Okay, now the lovely distributive property is what allows us to get around the fact that we can't add and subtract, and it allows us to pass out the multiplication through groupings. Now remember that every term in the first grouping has to multiply with every term in the second grouping. So let's be really super orderly about this. Let's start with the first term in the first grouping and let's start passing it out. Here we go. 4a times 6a squared. Now I can multiply in any order I want. So I'm going to use that in order to get my coefficient, my number first. 4 times 6 is 24. And now I'll gather up my a's. So basically what I'm multiplying here is a and a squared. Well, remember what a squared means. a squared means I already have an a and an a multiplying. If I go ahead and I multiply in another a, I'm going to end up with one, two, three a's multiplying. So I end up with a cubed or a to the third power. Great. Let's keep passing out. Now I'm doing 4a times negative a. Remember that when you're multiplying, it's really easy to read these plus and minus signs as positive and negative. It just makes it simpler when you're multiplying. Okay, so basically I'm doing 4 times negative 1. It's a 1 there if you don't see a coefficient. So 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And then I have an a and an a multiplying. Careful now, we're multiplying, not adding and subtracting. So we're going to see them accumulate. a times a is two a's multiplying, or a squared. Okay, now let's keep going. 4a times positive 2. Well, 4 times positive 2 is positive 8. And there's only a single a this time, so that will be a. Great. So we passed out the first term in the first grouping to every term in the second grouping, but we haven't dealt with the second term yet. So let's do that. Positive 2 is what we'll pass out now. Okay, so positive 2 times 6a squared. Positive 2 times positive 6 is positive 12, and I just see the 1a squared there, so I'll still have an a squared. Positive 2 times negative a, or like we said, negative 1a. Positive 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And again, I just have the single a there, so we'll see that a still there. And then positive 2 times positive 2 is positive 4. Now, technically, we're done with our multiplication. We did all the multiplying. However, what we need to realize is that in the world of math, final fraction answers are simplified. They're as simple as we can get them. And so what we're going to want to do here is all that's left to do here is a bunch of addition and subtraction if there's any adding and subtracting we can do to make this simpler, simpler, we should do it. But like we said at the beginning, you can only add and subtract like 
terms. So let's examine this term by term. First term, 24a cubed. This is an a cube term. It will only combine with other a cubed terms. And I don't see any other a cubed terms. So there's nothing it can combine with. It's just going to be there in my final answer. And now I'm just going to remove the visual distraction by crossing it off. Let's consider the next term. Negative 4a squared. Negative 4a squared. Remember to read the sign in front as if it belongs to that term. Negative 4a squared. Now that is an a squared term. It is only going to combine with other a squared terms. And I can see another one right here. Positive 12a squared. So as I combine, remember I'm adding and subtracting. So if I go to put this in my calculator, no, you can't put the a squared in, but you can put the numbers in. I would put negative 4 plus 12. And I would get positive 8, so that's going to be a plus 8. Now when you're adding and subtracting, super important to know what you're doing right now, adding and subtracting, we can only do like terms because basically, you know, apples and apples give us apples, or in this case, a squareds and a squareds give us a squareds. So what do I have? I have positive 8a squareds. The exponent is never going to change when I'm adding and subtracting, never. Okay, so then I considered my a squared terms. Let's move on to our next type of term, plain old a terms. So I have this positive 8a and this guy negative 2a. We're combining now, so I'm going to type 8 minus 2. If you type 8 negative 2, you're going to get a little error message out of your calculator because it's a little dumb. It doesn't know those things mean the same thing. So 8 minus 2 gives me positive 6. Positive 6 what? Again, you're never ever going to see those a's changing when we're adding and subtracting. I'm just counting up how many a's I have. All right, I dealt with my a terms. Now I only have one constant term, one plain old number. There's nothing for it to combine with, so it's just going to be there by itself in the answer. Now here's what distinguishes my A students from my B students when I was a high school math teacher. My A students know when they're done. My B students are so lovely and sweet and obedient. They want to obey all these signs and keep doing math. They want to keep adding because they see all these plus signs. But guys, we can only combine like terms. We can only add and subtract if we have the same kinds of things. None of these terms are like this will not simplify any further. This is literally done. Know when you should go home. <laughs> know when the day is done, all right? That is the answer. And you say, oh my God, it's so ugly. I don't know what it means. And it's okay. We can't know anything more than this because we don't know the value of A. This is as simple as this can get unless somebody were to tell us what A is equal to. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math concept, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.